when it comes to attracting butterflies, there are two things that you really need to think about. The food plants for the caterpillars and then providing nectar for the adults. So the first thing to do is to research which butterflies you have in your local area and then research what their caterpillars eat. Many of our caterpillar species will feed on grasses. Some will feed on particular wildflowers, some on climbing things like honeysuckle. So there's a broad range of plants. Uh, without those, basically you're, you're only a sort of fuel stock. You're only offering fast food in terms of nectar. If you've got to you know, really support these species, then you want to offer the substance, the real meal, which is that growth stage of these organisms, which is the, the caterpillar. The second thing is nectar. And one of the key things, if you want a range of species, is to make sure that you've got nectar throughout the course of the year. So that means planting things which offer uh, nectar for spring butterflies, things like perhaps lady smock, which is great for spring nectar. So a range of species that flower throughout the season is really useful. You want to top it off with some ivy. Ivy's fantastic for butterflies. At the end of the year, it's flowering, and all of those species that overwinter as adults, so things like red admirals, will flock to your ivy to fuel up before they hibernate for the winter. What a fabulous place to be moving to when you think about the species that live there. Golden eagles, white-tailed eagles, wildcats, pine martens, mountain ringlet butterflies. And when it comes to planting the things that you require, you'll have to do some research. And nothing ever beats research. So firstly identify through looking at the butterfly atlas published by Butterfly Conservation which species live there and then see what they eat when they're caterpillars and try and plant and encourage those things and then think about which species of plant that you can put in that will produce nectar when those species are on the wing because it may well be that they might be late summer species uh, and they may have different generations there than they might have in the, in the south of England. Not seeing any butterflies is an unusual one. It could be that you've just missed them, that you weren't looking when they were on the wing, flitting over. It could be that things have changed in your community. It may not be your space, your garden, but what's over the way might have changed. Now you mentioned you're quite near farmland. Well, maybe the farmer's been spraying a bit more pesticide than normal. Maybe they cleared areas of rough grassland. Maybe they've done away with all of the thistles, all of the ragwort, because without that, there won't be the nectar there to support the, the, a, a large population, which is maybe moving into your garden as a sort of what we might call a marginal habitat. I think it's highly unlikely that there have been no butterflies in, in your garden. I think that unfortunately you've missed them, but now you've got a fantastic opportunity to not miss them by doing the big butterfly count. So you've got your nettles and you've got your buddleia. So essentially you've got the food plant of what we call the vanessid butterflies, things like commas, small tortoise shells, peacocks, red admirals, etc. And then you've got one of their favourite fueling points, the buddleia bush, and all of those species will flock to that. But the browns and some of the whites, you know, they will come to the buddleia, but their nettles are not too, too good for them. And I think if you want to cater for those other species, then you're going to have to encourage more plants to keep them there permanently. So, what is this? It's a scarlet tiger moth. Um, it's a very, very, what should we say, overblown moth. It's a bit gaudy. It's not my favourite moth. I like sort of subtle colours. If you lift the four wings of this moth gently forwards, you'll see that underneath they are the most preposterous orange reddish orange with black spots and it's a day flying species as well when they're flying around they do look like a bit of Versace's blown out of a designer store or something you know they are a little bit mm, too colorful for me I like a sort of sleek moth you know, understated for me the elef large elephant hawk moth leopard moth absolutely beautiful I, I love those sorts of moths you know the sort of subtle pastel greens of a lime hawk moth you know, your garden tiger and your scarlet tiger, your jersey tiger. 
nah, they run this sort of top shop in the 80s. It's just too much. Overall, I'm, I'm very sad to say that there are fewer butterflies. The last overall census was published by Butterfly Conservation in 2015 and it showed a decline of more than 70%. What's unusual about butterfly populations is that they go up and down naturally. So they'll have a good year, a bad year, a normal year. And this is part and parcel of the way that their population dynamics work in tune with the weather and other, other, other factors. But we know that our butterflies are overall in a state of decline and there are a multitude of reasons for this. Climate change is leading to changes in their distribution. The intensification of agriculture, loss of habitat, the overdependence on pesticides will be having a role too. In our gardens, we know that we lose lots of gardens to concrete and decking and artificial grass, which is no good for butterflies. Our ecosystems are dependent on these groups of insects, there's no doubt about that. So it's essential that we first understand you know, what's happening to those populations and then we, we do something about it. And that's why Big Butterfly Count is so important. This gives us an opportunity to contribute to our overall knowledge of what's happening to this species, which then allows butterfly conservation and others um, to affect better conservation of those species.